Hello, Weapons Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Gary, Paul Tierney. He's all known here on this stage, and he's all known myself at this stage. But we're here to do a couple of uh, decade videos. So basically, we're going from 2010. Obviously, we're coming into 2020 now, and we're going to kick things off with the team of the decades. And we've had a bit of a 50 50 job here where we are half 4 4 2 and half 4 3 3. So we kind of have to kind of see how things kind of go and what way we kind of get from the midfield up to the attack, I suppose. But we can start off with the goalkeepers and the defence anyway. I think we're going to agree on a back four either way. So um, the list of players probably from between that time without maybe forgetting people, Shea Given, David Ford, Kieran Westwood, Darren Randolph, uh, Rob Elliott. I know Kieran O'Hara and Mark Travers kind of came into it this year, but they I haven't, played, caps, but they haven't played official um, senior international uh, competitively, obviously they played a couple of friendlies, but I think that out of the the, the crop that we had, I think that's the best of of them. Um, but uh, if you were going, Gary, who would you be going? Well, I, th I think you can pretty much immediately narrow it down to two, which is Shea Given and Darren Randolph. And I think Shea Given comes into the equation for the all time Irish best keeper. But for this decade, I would go for Darren Randolph. I mean, he came in in that that Germany game. He played in, in the Euros in 2016. He's unquestionably our first choice now. I don't think Shea did enough in this decade. I know he went to the Euros in 2012, but it, it was a poor... I, he, I think he was injured, I think, looking back, without doubt. And uh, for me, our goalkeeper has to be Darren Randolph. Yeah. Uh, Paul? Uh, I'm the same as Gary, Darren Randolph. I think ever since he's come in in 2016, he's been pretty much a mainstay. Um rarely makes a mistake and set up that goal for Shane Long as well which is enough for me yeah, yeah. just just for an assist someone. just just for an assist it was a big goal probably the biggest night we've ever had the Aviva so very big for me yeah yeah I can't I can't really disagree with that like um, like I know Shea went to the 2012 Human Championships but we we lost to Croatia 3-1 we lost to Spain it was 4-0 and uh, the Italy game as well so um I think that I think if you're to put together all our best qualifying games and Euro games, you'd have to say it it it'd be Darren Randolph, like, um, because he has had some 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 very good games, like even uh, the game against um Denmark, just there, like if you really he had a great game, like so, yeah, I I'd, I'd agree with that, yeah. I think yeah, well, I I'm gonna go for Darren as well. Um, I just think he's been different class since he came in, you know. You think of some of the goalkeepers over the years and they haven't really <coughs> lit it up or kind of took their chance. I think as soon as Darren got the jersey, I suppose, from that Germany game, he's never really let the country down. You can't really think of him having too many mistakes. You know, I know people try to, you know, really nitpick and say he was at fault for the, uh, I think it was the first goal of the 5-1. People tried to say he was at fault uh, for the short corner, but for me it was Harry Arthur that was at fault. But anyway, um, no argument for the likes of David Ford. I think done a solid enough job when called upon. It's been a bit of a late career as well internationally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did a fine job, but I don't think he comes into the equation with Shane Given and Darren Randolph. Yeah. yeah, and I do go back to your point as well. As we obviously did the team of the year before our, um, all time eleven, and Shea Given is undoubtedly our best keeper, especially in the Premier League era. Um, played at the highest level for a long time and I think obviously got his move then to Man City when they were trying to get to that elite level at the time so I do think that's worth noting as well it was obviously Darren's playing championship um, so if you're kind of looking at it that way but if you're in terms of this decade 100% Darren Randolph so he's our goalkeeper of the decade uh, moving on then to right back I suppose would be an easier choice than left back um, for some of you but um I don't think you can really look any further than Seamus Coleman. I mean, he came over to Everton from um, Sligo Rovers and just, he went on all the Blackpool, got them promoted and went came back to Everton and then really started to kick on. Took Trapatoni a while to get him in the team, but I think once he once he got into the team, I think there was no looking back really. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. For the team of the decade, I would have no doubt. Uh, he may not be in my team to play Slovakia in March, but <laughs> without doubt... I don't think we can pick mm. another right back because he has been for almost all of the decade. He has been our right back. Mm. And John O'Shea played there a little bit, but mm. uh, Steve, and Stephen if you, Kelly, you've had Stephen Kelly as well played and and uh, some so of the qualifiers you, for the Euros or whatever. But yeah, I mean, awesome. Seamus was there. 
No, Sawyer's Christy shouts spot, no? No, uh, Sawyer's has done very well for us, even scoring twice, maybe more for us. But again, you can't look past Coleman. He's got the experience. He's played in the playoff final. One of the few players of this decade who's played in Europe as well for Everton. He's a big player for us. And even now, if Darty gets in ahead of him, he's still good to, he's still good to chat to, to Darty, get him playing well in the international side. That's what we need. Yeah, true professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with uh, Seamus Cullen as well. Like, like Stephen Kelly never really was, uh, he was part of the squad with, with Trapatoni, but he was never really given an opportunity because obviously Trapatoni, the way he was, he wouldn't really change the players because they knew the system. And I actually spoke to Stephen Kelly in 2016, he, he said, you know, um, you know, he drink a winner at a wedding. Yeah, that was it, yeah, but he struggled <laughs> to get in. He, he said once the team was set, he couldn't get into it, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. so. He never really got his opportunity when he was doing well, you know what I mean? So I think that, I su- sorry, I think that was the same for a lot of players on the yeah. Chapel Town. It was a very frustrating time for some of them and it took him a while to actually bed some of them in, especially yeah. the ones who are consistent now. Well I think Coleman falls under that category yeah. as well. I mean I think it was under O'Neill more so he got the real push then, you know. Yeah. Um I think there's there's other players on the list there, uh Cyrus Christie, Matt Doherty and then I mean, you could maybe say John O'Shea, but none of these were consistently you know, playing right back, and I think James Coleman, who captain us as the Euros, you know, mm. unfortunately was taken, I suppose, a year out through injury as well. Um, but even in that year, you could see how much we missed him. I think that goes down to show. And you go back to the fact that he's been playing probably out of all of our players, probably playing at the highest level for the longest over that period of time in terms of where, where I know they were up and down the league. Uh, but he was playing in Europe uh, a good few years in that decade and then he was getting linked to the likes of Man United and PSG and all these types of things well, I don't think any of our players even even now are really getting uh, linked with those types of moves maybe Matt Darty now but I think Matt Darty's he has the, the, the problem he has is he can't get into the team ahead of Shields <coughs> and I think that's the, the biggest issue is that because he can't get into their team, he's not really in the argument here. Not to say that he's not a great player. No, no but he just hasn't. I mean, the, the decade from a footballing perspective is over, and yeah. Matt hasn't couldn't have done enough for an argument. Yeah, I think two competitive yeah. caps yeah. in the last. Yeah, so it's not an argument. Yeah. Here. They tried. They tried yeah. to get him in at right midfield against Gibraltar, and it didn't really work. He either has to be right wing back or just a solid right back. That's mm. the only way it'll yeah. work from the way he does it at Wolves yeah. as well. You have to take into account as well, like over the decade as well like our biggest threat has been it's from wide areas um, Seppi's everything like that and like Seamus is probably like integral part of that like you know that's our most the biggest threat in the team like it always has been really yeah well you think of the goal against Georgia he scored I also think of the, the goal against Sweden he <laughs> set up for Wessel. Um, you know he was always bombing up even though we were a very defensive team but anyway Seamus Coleman gets in there and um uh, I don't know are we going to do a, a captain or are we going to just leave that maybe to the end leave, leave it to the, the end, end. <laughs> yeah uh, left back then the choices I have there Kevin Kilban started off the, the decade uh, left back he was obviously pushed back from left midfield Stephen Ward Mark Wilson Robbie Brady and um, Enda Stevens. it's a tough one mm-hmm. yeah. I think a lot of people just don't want to pick Stephen Ward um, <coughs> the, the issues do you know what after 2012, I didn't really. I thought we we would have got a new left back in at that point, which wasn't the case. I thought he really reinvented his career, and he he went down to Burnley yeah. from Wolves, yeah. and then came back up and made himself a fairly decent left back. Was was good in the Euro Euro 2016 and yeah. and, and all. I mean, I think what really killed him was the five one game. I think he was ridiculed after that game. He was, but he he, he was. If you're looking at team of the decade and you're picking from that list as a left back I think you have to pick Stephen Ward and this is where I, I mean I would probably try and try to shoo we can get onto the centre half debate but uh, shoo somebody else in there but if you are picking a left back given he was our left back mm. in the, the major tournaments and I suppose I, I, I actually would yeah. would pick Stephen Ward from that yeah. uh, from that choice Whereas if you're trying to pick a best 11 and try and fit players in, you could try and squeeze a Robbie yeah. Brady or someone yeah. in there. But for me... Or even Enda Stevens. Or Enda Stevens. Yeah. I, but he, I don't think Enda Stevens has played enough. No, yeah. And where Stephen Ward was there for all the big games of the decade, um, 
I think, I mean, I, I agreed. I mean, I thought th- there was plenty of times I thought he was going to lose his place, but he didn't. And he, mm. he, he was very consistent. And uh, leaving aside the WhatsApp, I think he's... Uh, <laughs> he probably is. That, yeah. He probably is. Or, or I think he is our left back <coughs> of the decade for me. It, it, kind, it, it kind of relates to, like, Glenn Whelan. Like, although some people might think that Glenn Whelan, whatever, technically isn't the best player in the world or isn't our strongest because like, he was there for all of it he played in every single tournament he was he yeah. pretty much was starting in every team so it's kind of that same yeah the same kind of argument anything to add uh, for me or anyone to choose uh, well personally because the way I have my team I've got Robbie Brady playing there and the reason is I want to get him in because of his set piece ability <coughs> as well as the importance of Euro 2016 he was brilliant in it got the penalty against France and of course the big goal against Italy which is probably the biggest goal of the decade bar the Germany one as well um, I just want them in simply because of that and a set piece prowess I mean it's second to none yeah you can argue you can shoot him in there but I mean I don't think he played there enough times yeah. to warrant a, a team in the decade spot yeah. whereas Stephen Ward to be fair to him has played the majority of the decade which is such a hard thing to do at international level to remain as pretty much the number one which you can't really say he wasn't, yeah. especially if you look no, at yeah. him. No, he was. He if you look was. at for, tournaments for and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Brady's best games were probably when he played left wing. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Well. true. True. So I think that's <laughs> Stephen Ward, <laughs> James Coleman, Dan Randolph. Then we're on to centre backs, which is picked two, pick two uh, of the list of centre backs John O'Shea, Shane Duffy, Richard Dunn, Richard Kyo, Kieran Clark, Sean St. Ledger, Darren O'Dea, Paul McShane, John Egan. Um, Wilson as well uh, Mark Wilson sorry um, Damien Delaney so I think the first maybe four or five there on the list are, are probably the real contenders again go back to the argument with the, mm. with Doherty and uh, Stevens with Egan hasn't played enough he's only had yeah, two yeah. Uh, recent yeah, I agree uh, with that. Yeah. proper caps where, yeah. where uh, he was mm. first choice uh, maybe he could be in the choice for the next uh, team in the decade. Yeah. <coughs> Hopefully we're all still here for that. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, if, if I'm going for two, I'm probably going with um, Richard Dunn and John O'Shea. Mm-hmm. And it's f- unfortunate yeah. for me, in a way, for Shane Duffy, because Shane Duffy's really come into his own, <coughs> I suppose, since the Euros. Um, <coughs> you could argue Dunn was maybe on the kind of way out, but as... Gary said to me on the way down in the car, like you think of the Ru- Russia performance, that was it within the decade and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. he was like me. our best player for that whole qualifying campaign, mm. like set piece goals from set piece. He was so important. Like, mm. He was a different player on the paper. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, in twenty twelve qualifiers, he did get a couple of goals as well, which yeah. we're usually short That's for so. goals. So yeah. like he is needed, obviously. Like yeah, it's so, uh, well, Richard Dunn. Yeah, but go on. I, I would actually go for Richard. Maybe I, I would. Phrase it just a little bit. I know we've got a long list there. I, I, I would actually narrow it down to six, first of all, and then very quickly down to three. And the three, the six will be O'Shea, Duffy and Dunn. And then Richard Kyo, Kieran Clark and Sean St. Ledger. I give Kieran Clark, Sean, Sean St. Ledger and Richard Kyo a very honourable mention. Yeah, All made key yeah. contributions. Sean St. Ledger in Poland scored the goal. And the only, the only Clark, goal. The yeah. only goal. Kieran Clark... Um, Still a key player, and he could become a key player for us, but I don't think he makes the team of the decade. And, and well, Richard Kyo, I think we probably won't see him in green again, but again, a crucial player, never left us down. Yeah. Uh, so I think they all deserve a mention. Then it comes down to Richard Dunn, uh, John O'Shea, and, and Shane Duffy. And this is where I was probably going to try and cobble together because it's a difficult choice. But I would actually. Yeah, I, I, I think Richard Dunn and the Moscow performance. Uh, Paul McGrath said it was the greatest performance ever by an Irish player. I would actually disagree because of Paul McGrath in 1994, but apart from that... Yeah, that's I, Paul McGrath. Yeah, that's Paul McGrath. I think Paul yeah. McGrath is, deserves it for, for the giant stadium in 94, but Richard Dunn was just unbelievable that night. I mean, you might say a lot of his better performances were in the last decade, but... I mean, he still, he got the crucial goal against Armenia that um, got us to the playoff. He was a crucial player for, um, he, he went to the Euros in 2012. He played in the next campaign, not as crucial in the campaign for 2014. I, I think Richard Dunn did enough to, to make the team. And 
I don't think you can pick an Irish team of the decade without John O'Shea. I mean, yeah. he was just, he has to play. Yeah. I, he was just absolutely superb. The the, the, the goal in Gelson Kirken springs to mind on his mm. 100th cap. I mean, what a fairy tale that was. But he was a mainstay of our defence right up to 20. I mean, he yeah. retired only 2018. Um, mm. So I think he has to play. Now, this seems incredibly harsh on Shane Duffy. Yeah. I, and I, I mean, I think you can make an argument for any two from the three. I mean, Shane Duffy's a superb player, arguably our best player at the moment. So yeah. I, I don't know, but I mean... and. Well, I think if you if you were to say to Shane Duffy, you're getting pipped on two players of the decade. Yeah. I don't think he'd be too disappointed in the two that are ahead of him. Yeah, um, that's one thing you could say. I do want to go back to you touched on people scoring goals and stuff like that. I didn't think Sean Saint Ledger. Yeah. I think never really got the credit he probably deserved. I know he played a lot of Championship at the time when you know international players weren't really known to be playing Championship, and he came in and he was always very good for us and he scored yeah. crucial goals against the Italians and. He obviously scored the equaliser against Croatia in Euro 2012. We okay. all know that went tits up, but anyway. Um, and the trap with Tony McShane was always part of the setup as well. Yeah, but I think, and um, I know it's just past the decade, but you always think back to the Thierry Henry thing, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, I, as I mentioned with Ward, <laughs> uh, getting killed for the, the Denmark game, I think McShane always is remembered yeah. for that, and he, which is just unfortunate, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And still playing to now, McShane is, to yeah. be fair to him. Uh, but look, I think it's fair to say that O'Shea and Dunn, with, you know, I think Shane Duffy, again, he might go on to be in the next decade, to, mm. the defender of the decade. I mean, he's yeah. only 27. And to be fair, if you're, if you're talking about a decade, you're kind of talking more so about longevity. Duffy's only really came in since the back end of Euro 2016. Been an ever-present since, but, you know... Um, what I'm saying basically is I think O'Shea and Dunn played a lot longer in the decade than Shane Duffy did. Although Shane well, Duffy's I think Shane Duffy probably played more than Richard Dunn. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think whatever way, I, I think whoever we leave out, there's people going to be screaming saying we're wrong. And Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's... Uh, I think you can make cases both ways. I mean, can you leave Richard Dunn out from Moscow? Can you leave Shane Duffy out? I mean, he came in in Euro 2016. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I probably am. I, I mean, I just said I'm leaving him out, and I know it's. Uh, mm. I, I I can accept people saying, "Well, you're wrong, actually." Yeah. You know, and yeah. and I think yeah. you can make That's a case. About, like, it is yeah. one. I mean, it is. This is a real debate. I I don't yeah. think people can question. We're not going to argue with anyone. Seamus Coleman or someone yeah. like that, but I think you can certainly argue this one, whichever way we go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I think as well. You know, and I mentioned earlier, you talk about performance as well. His performance against Wales when McLean scored, yeah, uh, the one nil. Yeah. Shane Duffy was a man mountain. That like he like if his granny was in the air, he would have headed it. Mm. Like he was heading everything, and kept, we kept the clean sheet, got the win. You know, one game away from getting yeah, the World Cup. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But yeah. and he scored against the uh, Denmark as well. You rarely see him lose a header. Rarely see him lose a header. Yeah, every time he's there, he clears it. Colossal. So there are our centre halves and uh, I'm going Richard Dunn, John O'Shea. I think it's a clean sweep again, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, reluctantly leaving Shane Duffy out. So, Brian Siobhan, if you're watching, I'm sorry for leaving this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, as I said, that if there was two players that you'd want to be have ahead of you, it'd be those two. You know, Dunn got into the all time 11, you know, with Paul McGrath that we did. So, you know, he's not in bad yeah. company. He's not in bad company. Um, then I suppose if I, we're going to have to come to this now is it 4 4 2 or 4 3 3? I'll go 4 3 3 if it keeps everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going 4 yeah, 3 yeah. 3. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. So, yeah. well, okay. a, a 4 5 1 in uh, possession and 4 3 3 in possession. <laughs> that's, that's the fairest way, I suppose. Yeah. But, well, the midfielders that we've had pretty much in that time, I'm kind of going with the, the best ones that we've had. Jeff Hendrick. Glenn Whelan, Keith Andrews, Darren Gibson, James McCarthy, Keith Fahey, Paul Green, Wes Hoolan, David Moyler, Andy Reid, Stephen Quinn, Harry Arthur, and Connor Howard. And I don't think we're missing anyone else that doesn't really come to mind no. um, if we're talking about you know players that are at the higher end, um, so to speak. Yeah, uh, yeah so Stephen Ardell doesn't get <laughs> but, um, he didn't play this decade yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, so I suppose you're going to have two sitters and one one at the top of the Christmas tree type of thing mm. is that what you're going with 
Yeah. I think Glenn Whelan has to be a shoe in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this this yeah. goes back to, again. Uh, people slag Glenn Whelan all the time, and you know, maybe it's because they support different clubs that play a more expressive way. And I can understand that. But for me, I think Glenn Whelan does a great job. A lot of the time he was playing the four four sorry four four two. Trump, and it yeah. kind of exposed him whereas I think now when you see him with Mick he's much better in that just sitting in front of the uh, yeah. defence and he can kind of just sweep up in between the lines and I think that's what he's really good at I think that's the way Stoke played with him you know and he was integral mm-hmm. to Stoke and Villa um, yeah. he, he, when, when he left Stoke they got relegated like, I think that kind of goes to show you and he helped Villa get back up then uh, I know they let him go or whatever but I think a lot of the stuff he does I wouldn't say goes unnoticed, but I just think it isn't appreciated. And I think he, Kieran went spoke about it earlier about you know players getting to tournaments. I think we were talking about Stephen Ward when he said it. Is that he was there throughout? He's even after reinvent himself and get himself back in the team now. And you go back, you mm-hmm. don't get into, you don't you don't play conse- consecutively. Sorry for a decade if you're a bad player. Uh, you know that's three different marriages have picked him. Yeah. It's not like it's just been one favorite and. Mm-hmm. He's been picked by three different managers, and I think that has to be taken into consideration. Um, yeah. Then if, if I'm going with another midfielder, and this is this might be me being biased, but I think uh, James McCarthy. Uh, I think of every big performance that we've had in, in the last decade, pretty much he was involved in, especially Euros time, the Germany game, these yeah. types of performances. Um, he was integral when he wasn't injured. He was brilliant. I don't think he really, I don't think he really played to the best of his abilities at times because of the positions he was put in by, by certain managers but mm. Trapattoni I'm kind of alluding to there in his earlier days he wasn't really playing, he was playing him as a number 10 when he was a defence midfielder yeah. wasn't getting the best out of him people were thought he was you know a dud but yeah. when O'Neill came in he played him as proper position I thought he got the best out of him some people might be screaming at the, uh, at the screen now I don't really care but for me that's who my sitting two would be um, in there but uh Paul, who would you have? Uh, for me, it's got to be Whelan. Uh, again, he's like our Michael Carrick. He sets everything up from the back, gets it to the lads to play up front, and um, just he's solid and he's got the experience. He's been there for years. Even in this qualifying campaign, particularly against Switzerland, he had a brilliant game. He was a bit tired against Denmark towards the end, but he was brilliant against the Swiss. Uh, Jeff Hendrick, Euro 2016, he hasn't really recaptured that form since then. But he's still playing. He's constantly in the team. If he could just get a bit more consistent and maybe get a bit more game time with Burnley as well, which he has been the last few weeks, it'll stand to him. So those are my two, definitely. Okay. Yeah, it, it, this is a. I mean, I'm a huge Glenn Whelan fan, and I think I agree. Glenn so Whelan has. So is um, I think that that's that's without a doubt. <laughs> I I I'm actually the second one is actually. Probably a, a difficult one. I, I keep Keith Andrews in the mix there because in the early part of the decade... I did say I was playing a bit biased with James Okay. Um, I, I, I'm tending to agree on James McCarthy in the sense that when he was fit and when he was at his best, there was no doubt he should be in the mm. team. The other one in, in contention is Jeff Hendrick, who had a superb 2016. And I think there's probably question marks over James and Jeff. Yeah, uh, well, long, long, longevity, maybe. Yeah. Sorry, can I say? Yeah, but the, they're the two that I'd be struggling who to leave out, like yeah. the the James Ricard and Jeff Henry because, uh, well, Jeff yeah. Jeff Henry follows us on Instagram if that wants to sway you. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, uh, Jeff Henry, like <clears throat> if you look at the time he did play well in twenty sixteen, he's a sort of player when you, you see him playing for Burnley, he, he he starts deep and he comes forward. The game has to be in front of him. You look at the the shots of goal he has things like that he, he, the game is always in front of him he's playing behind uh, people behind the wingers behind the, the strikers and the games that he's struggling like you look at the last game people were, were, were giving him a lot of stick but he was playing high and he was he, he had his back to go all the time he's not very comfortable doing that like that's not how he plays do you know what I mean and I think that's the problem like he's kind of being played a little bit out of position but they don't want to leave him out of the game well, see, I think if you went to four four two, I think it would suit Hendrick a bit yeah. more. But and if you're playing the four three three, I don't think it suits him. Uh, yeah. In a in a way, I mean, the way Mick McCarthy plays now, he plays with like a there's no number ten. It's a set two, mm. and then wheeling in behind. Whereas the way we're kind of trying to do it now, it's mm. two 
sitting and one at the top of the yeah. Christmas tree. And then if that makes sense. Like Gam um, Whelan, like the reason why he was so good, like people four four two that he was ex- exposed, but that's only if it's if it's expansive. Whereas with Trap, it's only the reason why he did so well is because literally him and Andrews were both defensive players and sat, and then the the four kind of were just left to play, weren't mm-hmm. they? So, but I think that's again why the, why they might have been a bit exposed at the time, especially go back to the Euros. I think people knew what way we were going to set up, so we got battered. In that, in that yeah, aspect. yeah, yeah. Um, um, we did get battered by real quality sides in that Euros. I mean, Spain and yeah, Italy. Yeah. You know, Spain played Italy in the final, and I think if anyone, Croatia, were not yeah. that, but arguably the third or fourth. Yeah, yeah but I'm just saying, if you're going to set up with such basic tactics, yeah, okay, but, by quality okay, teams, you're yeah, okay. And, and, and Andrew said that on off the ball, didn't he? He said that you know playing four four two against Spain, like we were just chasing shadows. Do you know what I mean? It's, you, know. you think of that Italy team as well they got a draw against Spain in the first group game which is not <coughs> a mean feat it shows how strong they were as well even though they might have been coming towards the end they were brilliant that night as well oh, they, they beat I mean they beat Germany uh, yeah. in Warsaw they beat England and up they beat England in the quarter final that was a serious Italy team yeah, I know yeah. they got hammered in the final but it was obviously a serious yeah. Spanish team as well but that was a seriously good side I mean the two best teams did play in the final Yeah. and Croatia were very unfortunate not to come out of the group yeah. right now Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't. Did you give us a definitive answer? So my one is going to be uh, Glenn Whelan. Um, it kills me to leave out Jeff Hendrick, like what I call James McCarthy, and then uh, Wes Hillen. Your two, then, if you're picking. Yeah, my two. I, I'm sorry, Glenn Whelan, without a doubt. For the centre back, I was really struggling to leave out, make an argument for leaving out Shane Duffy. I'm actually struggling to to put in either James McCarthy or Jeff Hendrick. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go for, for James just about. What James would you McCarthy. not go for Keith Andrews? I, I think Keith Andrews is a very good shout and he played in the Euros, but I don't think he did enough in the early part of the decade to, to get ahead enough to play well. enough. Yeah. 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 Okay, fair enough. Um, Paul, uh, for I think me, this is right on you here. Yeah, uh, well. No, hang um, on, well, you've gone James McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would put Hendrick in because I think he's just consistently been there, whereas McCarthy, he's in, he's out. Maybe he's had big performances in big games, but he hasn't been there for the nitty-gritty and hasn't got maybe mm. as many goals as Hendrick, who's... Yeah, yeah. yeah but his job yeah. doesn't really score goals. True, very true. Um, true. The only thing I would say, Hendrick is very, very unlucky not to get in here um, yeah. in regards to his longevity. He's played probably over half a decade as a... As a starter or first choice, yeah, um, has gone on to become a Premier League regular. But I watched a video recently of Jeff and Robbie Brady speaking about like how much they've missed James McCarthy in that team, and I think that goes to show you as yeah. well. Um, maybe not so much in recent times. McCarthy's been able to show it because of his injuries, um, but I think a fully fit James McCarthy. I go back to the games where we've beaten some of the best teams in the yeah. world and he's been in that team um, and again I think Jeff's a very very unfortunate bit like Shane Duffy to be left out but um, we have to have a well look we, we could still have Jeff as an argument as your number 10 so I'll let you just kind of have that one in there but he's still not ruled out just yet um, but if we're going for a number 10 as, and there's a, there's a couple where you kind of mix and match them whatever way you want Andy Reid um you know what happened there with Trapattoni, so he was a bit unfortunate. Um, but I think Aid McGeady was sh- was shoehorned in there. I think Robbie Brady was shoehorned in there for a, a, a large period as well under Matt O'Neill. Yeah. And um, obviously a natural position, and most people online had this show of Wes Hulahan. Kieran's already picked him. Um, but you could have Jeff Hendrick as part of that ten now as well. So. Entirely up to you guys. I'll reveal mine at the end. Mm. For me, it's Wes Hulan. I think he's the best ball playing midfielder on that team sheet. He set up a lot for us. You think of he missed that chance against Italy as well, and then straight up two minutes later puts a peach of a ball in for Brady, who threw himself and got probably the most important goal of the decade for us. Um, he's just an all round brilliant footballer. Everywhere he's been, he's done a job. For me, he's a shoo in. Okay, uh, Gary? Yeah, no, look, we, we, I, I can actually go back to the Andy Reid debate as well. Now, Andy Reid doesn't make the team, but people argue if Trapp had picked him, maybe he would be in the team. I mean, Wes is the similar type of player, and 
yeah, for the Euros, Wales was absolutely superb. I mean, against Sweden, the goal, not to mind the Italy game as well. Um, but I also, I mean, Robbie Brady was more than just shoehorned into that position. I mean, many people would argue that is his best position. He is a natural... Mm. I prefer my left wing. Top of the, yeah, but I mean, uh, you also have the James... I mean, and we're going for four three three, but you also have James McLean to come into the argument for left wing. And uh, yeah. I, I actually would be inclined to pick Robbie Brady in this position. Uh, for one thing, Kieran, it was Kieran mentioned about his set piece ability, which oh, I think is a oh, Sorry, he was absolutely crucial, and I, I think you actually need to get Robbie Robbie Brady in the team. You need to shoehorn him into the team. Well, I, I, but but I <laughs> I think Robbie Brady is is a number ten as well. I think he's. Um, How often does he play there at club level? Though? Yeah, Do you know what I mean. He'd only be playing really part time at Ireland, and then he was shoehorned okay. as but, number ten. But he's another player, not not to mind Wes, who Robbie had a superb Euros, and I mean Robbie got the goals, the goal against Italy, the goal against France. Okay, what position was he playing for them games? So yeah, he was playing on the left, wasn't he? Yeah, so mm. um, if, if for the goal, he kind of found himself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but then the goal good attackers, he found himself in the box. <laughs> <laughs> but then are we coming down to Robbie and James McLean because for the the left wing and the attacking yeah. left position? Because then, yeah. uh, I mean, does it come down to two out of three with 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 Wezzo, um James and Robbie? Do you mean two out of three votes? Votes. Well, two out of three position, two out of two out of three players. Because if if we pick Wes in the number ten role. Then you can only pick Robbie or or James McLean in the. Yeah, well, well maybe gonna, there's other there's you, other people in the gonna, argument. You're gonna hurt other people's feelings, but sorry, yeah. I, I don't. Well, no, there's other people in the argument, but I think there's. Ed McGeady uh, deserves a shout. I, I think yeah. Ed McGeady does deserve a shout, actually. But I mean, well, I, I suppose what I'm saying is, then if you do pick Wes, you are definitely leaving out one, if not both, of James and Robbie. Mm, and yeah, I think without doubt, you're definitely leaving out one of them, possibly two. Um, Okay, so but well, your 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 heart set on Robbie Brady, yeah, I, as number ten. I would play, yeah, I would play Robbie just ahead of Wes. Okay, yeah. that's 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 fair enough. Okay. Um, Paul, uh, for me, Hulahan, definitely, definitely. And you've already picked Wes, haven't you? Yep. Well, I'm gonna have to go for my old pal Wes myself. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I love Robbie Brady as much as everyone as well, and I love. Peak McLean from 2012 when he wasn't getting picked by, by probably Trap, but he should have been at Sunderland at the start when he was really, really good to about two years ago. I love that McLean. Um, but I, we'll come to the left side anyway. Um, but it is going to be very tough to, to, to uh, choose between them. But for me, as the number 10, I think Wes is, you know... The, the the most heartbreaking thing was he was picked so late in his career yeah, to come in yeah, and, and play yeah. that position because even though uh, he was a very fit fella and still is he's still playing like um but in that position more mo- more often than not you kind of need legs but he had the brains that even if even at that age he didn't really need the legs do you know what I mean he picked out passes that other people oh, would yeah, see yeah, um he brought a little bit of I suppose samba magic you could say. Uh, to the team when we just we didn't really have it and really kicked on under Martin O'Neill and I think Martin O'Neill kind of put that trust in him uh, similar to Brady in a way and, and, and yes you go back to the set pieces and so on and that's why it's going to get tough when, we, when we're talking about our wingers and so on but for me top of the Christmas tree Wes um, Hula and then we bring something on to our, to our three I suppose attackers two wingers and a new striker and I suppose we, we'll just go straight off to the left and the players you kind of have from the left side Damien Duff who obviously played in the uh, Euro 2012 as well was kind of coming to, towards the end of his career mm. James McLean Stephen Hunt um, Robbie Brady Aidan McGeady and I just put Daryl Horgan and, and Callum O'Dowd in there for you know just players that maybe deserve a little bit of a mention but not too much they haven't done enough competitively to, to warrant any sort of shout in the main picture but the, I suppose the first five maybe um, Duff McLean Hunt Brady McGeady I suppose they'd be the big ones that you'd, you'd be thinking of there wouldn't you 
Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. If I miss it, someone, like, you might take oh, no, the right without doubt. I, I don't think Damien Duff did enough in the decade. I mean, Damien Duff is yeah. he in the all-time team? Like, I can't recall. He certainly think should so, be. Yeah, yeah. very close, you know. If it was two thousand to two thousand and ten, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, so I don't, I don't think. No, yeah, he beat Kevin Sheedy. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you can pick <laughs> Damien Duff in um, for this decade. Uh, given, I mean, he retired in, in twenty twelve. I think it was so. Um, Aidan McGeady is probably a harder one. I mean, I think it was 93 caps, most of them in the, in this decade. But I I always felt we never really... I, I always felt with Aidan there was huge talent there, but we never really... Got the best. We never really got the best. We never saw it. It never fulfilled. I know he's still playing with Sunderland, you know. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I can't pick... I, I couldn't pick Aidan McGeady. And to me, then, it comes down to to James McLean or Robbie Brady and and this is probably going back to where I was trying to shoehorn Robbie in because both I mean okay well, well first of all I, I mean I'll make the case for both of them Robbie Brady I mean particularly Euro 2016 the Italy game the goal he also got the penalty against France he, Bosnia. he was super, Bosnia the goal out of the goal in uh, Zanica the Zanica fog, or the fog. Fog. yeah um, so yeah I mean and then, but then you've got James McLean, who for the World Cup campaign in 2018 was by far our best player. He got the goal in Vienna, our first away win in continental Europe from God only knows when. Well, 1967 actually, against decent <laughs> opposition. Um, the, the goal in Cardiff, the winner in Cardiff, the goal against Denmark. I mean, and he was our standout player for those two or three years. So I think it's a very, very tough choice to leave out either James or Robbie. Um, and now you're asking me to make the choice, so I would have to pick Robbie Brady to just because I, I think you have to play Robbie Brady in in your team of the decade for his set piece ability, for a fit playing Robbie a fit Robbie Brady at the peak of his abilities. I think from from 2016, I would I would put Robbie Brady in the team. That's a fair fair point, Paul. Uh, again, like Gary, it's between three Brady, McLean, and McGeady. I think if McGeady had shown us a little bit more he'd definitely be in there because he definitely has the most talent of the three but I don't think he ever really done what he was capable of doing anywhere really to be honest maybe at Celtic when he started but for Ireland it was only glimpses the most important being the two goals out in Georgia in the first game in qualifier we haven't actually beaten Georgia away since so he's got to be there but for me it has to be McLean the World Cup campaign, he was unreal. The goal out in Vienna and the goal in Cardiff, as Gary said. And just his work rate. Like, your left back would never be an issue with McLean there. Like, he'd lose the ball, but he'd still win it back. Uh, you think of the goal against Switzerland we got at home in this campaign. He went back with, uh, I'm not sure what the fullback's name was, but he won it back. Babu. In Babu, yeah. He went, he went back with him, won it back. The cross took a deflection, but it was an important goal in the end because we were losing. So for me, I'm going to go for James McLean. Okay, so that's one McLean, one Brady. Kieran, where, where are you at? Yeah, I'll kind of be the, the, the same lads in terms of it's down to McLean, Brady, McGeady. Um, but it's tough now. Obviously, Stephen, I know you mentioned Stephen Hunt at the start. Stephen Hunt only played, I think, 20 minutes in the 2012 European Championship. But... Um, it's kind of like but it's kind of like the the Ward situation and the Wheel situation where you know McLean has really been there for almost all of it. You know what I mean? I know he he kind of struggled to get into the Trapatoni team, but he a lot of people felt he should have been part of that team. And, Definitely, yeah. And yeah. after that, he was pretty much always part of the team. Um, sometimes he didn't play well, so, and a lot of times he did, but he always gave a hundred percent. Um, he scored some really important goals. Robbie Brady, when he did play, obviously um, was important for set pieces, like you said, and um, had some really good games. But I think purely for, if we're based on the decade and for longevity, and I'd have to say McLean. Well, it's down to me now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I had said if I was going to leave um, Brady out there with, with uh, Wes, that I'd have to have him probably on, on the left hand side. Um, yeah, this is re- like it's really, really, you know, it's like a it's like a photo finish almost. Um, the way I I will have it, 
Um, I would just have Robbie Brady edging it a little bit. You go back to Seppi's ability, I suppose, crossing, I suppose. Your, your end product more so. I think that Robbie Brady has a better end product. Um, he's, more, he's better from more attacking areas than McLean. But McLean gives you going back defensively, is brilliant and everything else. Um, probably makes me want to put Robbie Brady at left back and take Stephen Ward out now. But, um, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you could put James McLean at left back. And... No, 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 I don't. You get sent, you get sent <laughs> off. No, no. But I think, no, look, I do think it's worth noting that James McLean does deserve a really, really, really big shout. I think if any, if we could have replaced any of us here, James McLean it could be in the team if you replace one of us with some, someone else from the street, say, who was an Ireland fan. It's that. Difficult. Do you have lots of people screaming? Saying, should be McLean. You'll have lots of people screaming. Yeah, saying, I, I, I think you're going to have people screaming in either way. Yeah. But uh, I think Robbie Brady get, gets in there in terms of our best team of the decade on the left hand side. Then we go on to the right hand side, um, and then we have Liam Lawrence, uh, Jonathan Walters, Aidan McGeady again. Then you have Callum Robinson kind of coming in towards the newer times. Anthony Pilkington. Um, you see, he was playing Premier League with Norwich. You you can have um you can have James McLean on this. Or actually, you can have Robbie Brady as the right side of the wing here, by the way, because he has played a lot of, okay. on the right hand side. Mm. Um, but if I'm gonna go for someone who's done a, a brilliant job on the right hand side, I've been a great servant, and just think he kind of embodied everything that an Irish person should be. Even though he was obviously born in his man was obviously Irish from Dublin. Yeah. Um, everything about Jonathan Walters is what you want in your team he, leader you know times when he was captain when when, when the older guard kind of left Walters was the one to step up and stuff like that again go back to the Bosnia game he was the leader there scoring <coughs> and um, he played more or less out of position on, our, on, on the right hand side you could say and done a solid job throughout and when we needed the ball to stick up that's the top end of the pitch or whatever it was always a diagonal ball over to, to Walters and he would do stuff I remember was it the game against Germany when he was holding off all the Germans by himself yeah. <laughs> it's just the iconic stuff like yeah. that um, um, for me uh, uh, without kind of getting into it and I do think Aidan McGeady deserves a really really high mention um, the fact that he can't get in on either wing is is kind of mad but you just to go back to it again I think we got the best of Jonathan Walters, whereas with McGeady we didn't get the best, but there was definitely a better player skillfully than Jonathan Walters. But I wouldn't say, from a work rate point of view, I wouldn't say that um, McGeady would work as hard as uh, Jonathan Walters or even James McLean. Mm-hmm. Gary, you're over there looking at me like you want to kill me. So No, no, I just <laughs> fully, fully agree. Um, I, I actually don't even think you can make an argument. I don't think there's an argument for this position. I think it has to be Johnny Walters. Yeah. I, I go back and the, the, the second leg against Bosnia, and people forget how good Bosnia were. That was yeah. that was a serious yeah. win. That they had off. Dzeko in the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pjanic, 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 Pjanic as well. Pjanic 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 I mean, yeah, they, they were I mean, they were hot favourites, but they were seeded to win that playoff. And, and I mean, Begovic in goal, I think, as well? Yeah, I think yeah. he was, yeah. And I mean, he got the two goals in Dublin. It was a great win, great night. And... Uh, but in general, every, I'd agree with, I'm not trying to kill you at all, Paul, I'd agree with everything you said, and I think he has to play. He, he would definitely be in my team of the decade, and whether you're playing 4-3-3, 4-4-2, and yeah, without doubt, right side, of the, right side of attack, it has to be. Paul? Same for me, Jonathan Walters, that campaign especially, he pretty much got us over the line, also scored an important goal against Scotland at home, put us ahead, I know we didn't end up winning, but... Mm. It was towards getting through as well. Uh, he also got a good goal against Austria as well. When we were losing 1-0 at home in the 2018 campaign. Could have easily lost that game. Um, he, he's just passion, desire, everything we want in an Irish footballer. He has to be in there. Yeah, no. I echo everything they say there. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be Johnny Waters. Okay, I think that's fair enough. From yeah. No point kind of dwelling on it then. Uh, so Jonathan Walters is our right-sided... Uh, Player of the decade, right midfield, right winger, whatever way you want to word it. Um, I think it was in possession. It's uh, he's a winger, and when out of possession, he's a midfielder, isn't he? <laughs> um, then forwards of the decade. I mean, Robbie Keane, Shane Long, Kevin Doyle, <coughs> David McGoldrick, um, Callum Robinson, <coughs> Simon Cox, Noel Hunt, Connor Salmon, Anthony Stokes, Daryl Murphy, Scott Hogan, Sean McGuire. 
obviously as the list kind of comes to the, towards probably after David McGoldrick or, or even after Kevin Doyle I think you, you, you can't really look past the front three and obviously you look at since Bobby Keane's retired and the goals of our strikers have scored that kind of shows you how good and I know he was coming towards the back end of his career and he was still playing with LA Galaxy for large parts of the decade um, but he still came back and done a great job for Ireland Shane Long I think and maybe Kevin Doyle can kind of feel a little bit unfortunate if you're going to 4-3-3 and you have a one striker that they probably don't get into the team um, but I, for me um, I can never have an Irish team without Robbie Keane and even if he played at 45 minutes he'd have gotten my team no matter what I just think he's that good yeah I'd actually agree I think I mean he was there for two two of the crucial campaigns yeah. that could, I mean the Euros he did he did good okay he didn't score in Poland but he was an absolutely absolutely crucial player he was getting to Poland mm. scored some crucial goals in the the next campaign 2014 I mean he scored against Sweden anyway and I mean he was still there for um, I, I think enough games in the decade a man to take a chance score a goal or great as all without even without even an argument he's our greatest all time striker you know, might say his better days were the previous decade but I think he would have done enough in this decade I, and I don't think I mean Shane Long had a had a great I mean the goal against Germany obviously and, and 2016 Poland so he was Shane Long was absolutely crucial for the middle part of the decade but I, I don't think anybody else did enough to justify not picking Robbie Keane and I think as well though is that Robbie Keane played a big part in helping Long as well like I know he yeah. was, wasn't playing but he was in mm. in and around helping Long you know, as the as the long striker too, I think that's worth noting. Yeah, long long prior to Euro twenty sixteen as well, he did get a few goals other than the Germany game as well. He got a few in friendlies as well. Whereas you look at him now, struggling to get in with Southampton, and he hasn't scored for us since Moldova a few years ago, which is mm. you know hard to think about. But for me as well, Robbie Keane. I was looking at stats last night, even for this decade, he scored twenty seven goals for us in this decade. That's still more than the rest of them. And you think of the trouble we have with Gibraltar this year even. He scored five goals against Gibraltar two campaigns ago as well, which, I mean, is two more goals than we scored against them in this campaign. Sums it up for me. Yeah, yeah the same. Like, <clears throat> I think it's important, important to remember as well in, in 2012, the campaign, like our qualifiers, like the way we played, and Key Andrews even said it on off the ball, that we, the way we sat, we literally just counted on him. To, to hopefully score like, from what chances that we had and there was a lot of times he was isolated and, and he was still scoring loads of goals like he, he scored his 50th uh, goal for Ireland against Macedonia um, when we beat them 2-0 to, to in the qualifier and he scored he became the European qualifier's highest ever score against Gibraltar mm-hmm. when he scored only, re- only recently beat by Ronaldo mm-hmm. Cristiano yeah, yeah. yeah which is not me uh, so like you have to have Robbie Keane in it and he always says it he said it on Karen had the soccer box he said the, the, the greatest pride he ever had in his career was, was putting on the green jersey like so the only jersey that ever really fit was the green one <laughs> that. so yeah so I think that's it then um, I'm going to go for my captain Robbie Keane <coughs> I'm going out there yeah yeah I agree Robbie Keane uh, Richard Dunn I'm thinking Richard Dunn as a captain as a leader on the pitch Robbie edges it for me so but, yeah, there's no harm in having an argument. I mean, I, Robbie's the greatest ever striker, without a doubt. I mean, but I don't know about a captain. I I think Richard Dunn is someone I'd have if I was to pick a captain out of that those eleven we picked. I'd pick Richard Dunn. You could also argue John O'Shea as well. Mm, but you could also have Seamus Coleman, yeah. John yeah. Walters, yeah, 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 and we have. Like, you can argue Keane, them all. I think Keane yeah. would be the most vocal out of a lot of them. Yeah, and uh, was for the large part the captain of. of of the time in there, you know, I mean, Richie yeah. Richie Dunn probably wouldn't have been, but I know. Yeah, no, I know. No, I mean, I, yeah, I accept Robbie was the captain, but yeah. I, um, yeah. Kira, it, it, it's kind of riding on you here, whoever you would have. I'm gonna go with Robbie Keane because the, even when he wasn't really part of the the set of 2016, he was still kept in. As a as a leader figure within the dressing room, like so. yeah, yeah, and I think that shows a lot of times when you, <coughs> when you look back at your twenty sixteen after the games, and he was always going around, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of showed why he'd be such a good coach and why he's coaching now. So I do think that that's um, 
that's it then. So it's Randolph in goal, you got Coleman, O'Shea Dunn, um, Stephen Ward, and then you've got a midfield three with um, James McCarthy, Glenn Whelan, Wes Houlihan, and then you've got Robbie Brady, Jonathan Walters, and Robbie Keane as our striker and captain, and that's been the team of the decade. Thank you very much, lads. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And have a wonderful Christmas from all of us.